how much would you pay for a dollar? Surely it's no more than 99 cents, right? Anything more would be irrational. And most people understand this, but there's a game where people end up paying as much as three to five dollars for a single dollar bill. It's called the dollar auction game, and it was devised by Martin Schubick, an economist at Yale. The game is simple enough. There aren't any tricks, and players know the rules of the game from the start. People end up paying absurd amounts for a dollar only because of their own irrational behaviors. But before we get into that, we need to understand how the game works. One person holds up a dollar bill to a group of people and says, I'll auction this dollar off to the highest bidder. The auction works like you'd expect it to. The highest bidder wins the dollar and then pays their bid to the auctioneer. But there's one key difference. The second highest bidder must also pay their bid, even though they get nothing in return. So the key to remember here is the top two bidders have to pay, though the second highest bidder gets nothing and the highest bidder wins the dollar. The game usually starts off with someone bidding five cents because why not? Five cents for a dollar is a great deal. Then somebody else realizes that they too could get a dollar at a bargain, so they make a bid for 10 cents. Once people enter the game, it's usually not until the bids reach the 50 cent mark that players begin to see the game's logic. Here's what it looks like. Let's say player A bids 50 cents and player B bids 55 cents. If player A quits, they're out 50 cents, gone. But if they bid 60 cents, they could win the dollar and walk away with a 40 cent profit. Here's the issue. If player A raises their bid to 60 cents, then player B finds themselves at the exact same crossroads. If they quit, they're out 55 cents. But if they were to bid up to 65 cents, then they could win the dollar and walk away with a 35 cent profit. This logic drives each player to continue bidding, even past the dollar threshold, where people begin to bid more than a dollar for a dollar. At this point, everyone realizes they've entered a full-blown war of attrition, but they don't see how to get out of it. Think about it like this. If player B's bid is at $1.05 and player A's bid is at $1, player B wins the auction. But they paid a dollar and five cents to get the dollar, so they've actually lost five cents overall. Meanwhile, player A faces the sad reality that they'll have to pay a dollar and get nothing in return. But they could soften the blow if they chose to bid up to $1.10. Then they would only lose 10 cents overall rather than a dollar. The difficulty here is that the line between a rational decision and an irrational one gets muddied. Bidding more than a dollar for a dollar isn't rational, but choosing to extend the game so that you only lose 10 cents rather than a dollar isn't exactly the poster child of rationality either. It's difficult to tell which decision to make when neither is clearly the rational choice. Wartime decision-making often follows pure dollar auction logic as well. A government might continue to escalate commitment in hopes of winning the war, but war leads to increasingly severe losses, real losses of human lives for both sides. In the end, the winner is really just the smaller loser of the two. The dollar auction ends the same way. The winner of the auction gets the dollar, but they're a winner in name only, as they've actually lost money. It's important to remember that each player began the game making rational decisions. They saw an opportunity to gain a dollar at a bargain, but as they pursued their own self-interest, they fell into an escalation trap. As the game continues, it gets harder and harder to quit, but the game will never end unless someone finally decides that enough is enough and they quit. You might think that this is a silly game, and you'd be right, but this game works, and it works because of human nature. As humans, we don't like losses, and we're hopeful creatures. In this game, there's always a chance to improve our position, and there's always a chance to win the dollar. The issue is that it's temporary. We might improve our position this round, but it's going to worsen each time we face the decision to continue or quit. There are a few lessons that we can take away from the dollar auction. And the first is, the line between a rational and an irrational decision is not always clear. And I love this because that's how life is. Very few things present themselves as no-brainer decisions. Most of the time, we're walking a tightrope of uncertainty. We might have a chance to improve our position, but there's also a chance we could worsen it. And the better choice is not always crystal clear. The second lesson is thinking strategically, that's being able to see more than one step ahead, is a valuable skill. You might be able to exploit something in the short run, but that same strategy might end up hurting you in the long run, just like we saw in the game. If you could have seen the consequences of winning the dollar auction from the start, you may have never entered the game in the first place. 
The third lesson is that sometimes your best strategy is to quit, even if it means suffering a loss. This conclusion is very similar to the one made in my sunk cost fallacy video. Though it might not feel good to quit, sometimes it's the best decision we can make.